Hello again, this is UML Operator. Okay, in this session, I want to explain how Spark's EA example drill down into model simulation. If you select this, you get the order processing. And then from here, you can get to the activity diagram for multiple orders and then which leads into processing those orders. And folks have come in here and they've looked at the content, the explanation, and they're still confused how simulation works in activity diagrams. So we're gonna spend a moment, maybe more, in stepping through this. Besides the Sparks EA example file that they provide to you, they also provide some patterns that you can use. So we, we're in the start page, we go to the tab where it says create from patterns. Let's just type in simulations. We get to activity diagram, this one right here. And then when we select this, Sparks also can train you and explain that EA example model but still there's some confusion on how it works and what to do. All right, I'm gonna break this up into two parts. So we're on this pattern and let's go ahead. We've created a blank demo folder. And then you can see down here from the pattern, you can create models from this pattern. And we'll go ahead and select this. And it's going through right now and it's building the order process activity model for us, all right? So you can see this looks very similar to what is in the example folder. So when Sparks built this for you, provided you some content that steps you through how to launch the simulation, also provided you a link model simulation. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that. And it's gonna launch the Sparks page for run model simulation. And there's a lot of content in here that folks are still questioning me about and looking for some support and help. So let's step through this. Now to start this demonstration, I've gone to the Sparks factory default layout where browsers on the left, properties is in the upper right, and notes is in the lower right. And it's telling you how to run this. So you're gonna go to the simulate tab right here and then you're gonna to go to the panel dynamic simulation right here, and we're gonna open up the simulator. Now in the default layout, it opens up down here at the bottom. You've got a, a task bar, menu bar that's up at the top, and you've got a run button right here. Also in simulation, you have run simulation. You can start the simulation by selecting start. Let's go ahead and run it from the simulation dialog. And we're running it right now, and it's Basically, stepping through this simulation, it's going from multiple orders into process order. It's stepping through this. Let me roll down a little bit as we watch this. And it's gonna go through it 10 times, all right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and stop the simulation. I can stop it here, or I can stop it in the simulator, simulation right here, all right? So let's do something a little bit different as we step through this. Now I'm back over in my workspace layout where I've got toolbox over on the left open. I've got browser on the upper right and I have notes in the lower right. Plus I have properties and I have other things that are configured. So in another video, I show you how to customize or build your own workspace layouts. But what I wanna do is I wanna to go to my simulation workspace layout right here, and what this does is it brings in the simulation tooling. So in this case, I've got the simulation event window right here. I've got call stack, this is call stack right here. I have the simulation tool right here in this window, and I've got notes, and then over here I have properties, features, traceability, and then I have my browser, the upper right, pan and zoom, I have locals, here's local variables. So I like to keep locals here, run the simulator here. Let me go ahead and clear results by right clicking, selecting clear results. And let's go ahead and run this again. All right, we're gonna run this simulation again, which is basically moving between this activity 
and the decom the composition diagram, which is right here. And it's going to run through process order. And if I double click on it, I get to the decomposed or composition model for process order activity flow right here. Okay. Then I've got all these words and the explanations from Sparks. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to we need to run it from the first activity. If we run it from the process, it's just going to run the process and it's going to stop. But we want it to run through this flow through process order action, then go through here. And then when it's done doing either a closed path or true is fill order parallel path, it returns back here and eventually it'll end after it goes through three test runs. All right, so let's go ahead and select this and run it. So right in the simulation window right here, I'm, I'm on the diagram I wanna start with. Let's go ahead and run it. And we're in interpreted mode, by the way. And it's just going to keep running through. As in manual, it would stop at the decision and the merge points. But it's running through. At any point, I can pause and I can look at local variables. You can see right here, it's going through the stack. And it's telling me what's going on in the stack in the simulation. It's telling me the steps that it's going through. And when it comes back around the multiple order window, right now I'm going to pause. All right, so we pause right here. You see local variables is populated. We're on the seventh loop in this test. And we have the random set order status. It is randomly set it the Boolean true or false has set it to true. So when it's running through, let me go ahead and stop. When it's running through order accept, where it's processing using this JavaScript function, it is generating a true or false, which is going into this. So if the randomizer chooses false, it's going to close. If it chooses true, it's going to run through the uh, parallel processing in this simulation. Let's go back to the multiple order flow right here. And we're going to go ahead and change this time from interpreted to manual, right? Now, I have to tell you that manual is in all of this from corporate edition. I think it's even in professional, the very first edition, all the way up to the ultimate version. And I have the ultimate. In the corporate version to ultimate, it has interpreted and then executable is for state uh, machines, which I have another video on. We'll talk about that more in other sessions. We're going to set this to manual this time. We're on the diagram, the simulation, the activity diagram we want to start on. Let's go ahead and start it again. So when it's in manual, what it's going to do is it's going to get to the merge point, And it should stop and ask me in this decision, you want to fill order? Or do you want to merge to the close order? And I'm going to merge the close order in this loop. It's going to go around. All right. And now it's coming to the merge in this diagram where it's saying, OK, we made one pass. Do you want to move to activity final and close? Or do you want to decrement, go to whatever the next count number is? And let's decrement, all right? So manual allows us at the merge and the decision points using the guards, and we'll talk about that more in just a moment, to make decisions. This time we're going to fill the order, and it's running through this part after that decision, and then it's going to come back around, and then it's going to stop from the merge where we're going to say, hey, do you want to final the order or you do you want to decrement again? We're going to choose finalize and close the order. And it is closed and done. So let me explain this first model. And to do that, what I want to do is I'm going to drag and drop my property. I'm just going to float it right here next to this. And I'm going to select the very first action. And I know it's an action because it tells me it's an action. Now, kind is blank because it is none of these. It is an atomic or blank or basic action item. Inside it, 
you see that they have put in a sim, which is the construct for simulation in Sparks, dot. And then they've chosen orders as a value. And then they've set a counter to 10, right? So that's what they've done here in this effect. And the reason this effect is showing in the action item is because they have show effect and diagram. If I check that off, you can see it's not showing. If I select this and I check that on, it is now showing. All right, let's go to the next one. You can see in status order, what they've done is they've set a simulation, sim construct dot, and then they've called this order accepted. And then they're running a JavaScript that basically randomly chooses a true or false Boolean zero or one, however you want to put it, result in the loop uh, for testing. Now this, this scripting here is commonly used in development, not just in Sparks, but in other areas. And basically this expression is a, in JavaScript generates a random number between zero and one. So essentially this function right here, what this does is a pseudo random floating pointer where zero is inclusive and one is exclusive. And so the function generates this, the math.random times two part of this expression multiplies the random number generated by the function by two. And now we have a random number between zero, again, inclusive, and two, which exclusive result. Then the, when you wrap it all together right here, the function rounds down the result from this previous step to the nearest integer. So you either end up with zero or one. It's like flipping a coin. All right. So in summary, this expression will return a true approximately 50% of the time or a false the other 50% of the time. Again, like flipping a coin. So that's how that works. That's why they're using it here within testing their simulation within this flow. So you can see here we're setting a counter equals 10. We come down here and we generate, we randomly generate a true false result. We come down here. And then we're from the merge, we exercise, hey, do you want to deprecate, sorry, decrement, or do you want to close? And then you can see here in this effect, you've got sim dot, which is uh, the simulation construct, orders, and then we decrement, right? And then so we go from 10 to nine in the first loop, then nine to eight, and so on until we hit zero or less than zero and then we close, all right? So that's how this works. Now, as soon as it hits this action item here, which is a call behavior, what it's doing is it's launching this model, right? It's launching this model. So as we're coming down through here, we come off of order status, I'm gonna run the simulation, watch what happens, all right? So we're gonna run it from the top of this, it's going down, it's going to go in and to hit process, I'm gonna pause, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and cancel, right? So what it did was it sent us to decision point where we have two guards. One, if the result of order accepted is false, it will close. It'll go to this merge and it will close. If it's true, it will process this action action item, excuse me, from this decision point, right? So the guards are in place to control the flow from the decision. The guards are in place here to control the flow for whatever you want to do in looping your simulation and your test. And there's a lot more that you can do that I'll explain in other videos, but that's how this works, okay? So we're going to just move this off to the side. I'm just gonna place it right here. We're gonna go back here and we're gonna run the simulation uh, in interpreted mode. Go ahead and select it. So you can see what's happening here is it's going through. And let me go ahead and just close this. Here's your call stack. You can see what's happening within the call stack. You can see what's happening in the simulation. 
you can pause here at any time or you can pause here at any time. So as you're watching your simulation, your testing going through, you're able to pause. And then as soon as you pause, you're able to see within your local stack what's going on at that particular moment. So you can see that the accepted results are false. So it's going to move through and close in this loop. We're at the eighth order cycle going through. Let's go ahead and resume. So turn pause off and it's just going to go through the test. So you're able to test your simulations as you're going through. Now over in when we're running on our platforms and we're running these scripts for testing, we're not just running 10, we're running thousands. And you know, we're not running it from Sparks per se, but we're running it from code that's within our test servers using some sort of scripting engine or testing engine or performance tooling to help drive and see how our systems are actually performing on the functions that we've laid out and we're simulating. Now I'm going to go ahead and end this session here. In the next session following this one, we're actually going to build these Sparks example model from scratch. All right. So you'll be able to see how this comes together using Sparks Enterprise Architect. So I'll see you there. And until then, happy modeling.